All right, now let's learn about some statistics. So we're going to dive a little deeper. So the first thing we're going to see is the sys.stats view of our existing statistics on the merge join table. After that, we're going to execute DBCC show statistics. And this is going to give us the actual statistics for a given table or an index view. The output of the command is composed of three items, or sections, if you will. The statistics header, the density vector, and the histogram. The part that begins with underscore WA is the name of the statistics object. All automatically generated statistics have a name that starts with underscore WA underscore sys. The WA is, just in case you're wondering, Washington. Why? Because that's where Redmond is. Updated was the last time the statistics were updated. The rows represent the total number of rows of the underlying table or index view at the moment the stats were updated. The row sampled is obviously the number of rows analyzed to generate these statistics. The steps we'll talk about later, but it's the number of steps in the histogram. Density, it's not used anymore. It's for backwards compatibility, so we're going to ignore it. The average key length is the average size in bytes of a column or set of columns that compose the statistics. The string index, the value is set to yes if the stats contain uh, summarized statistics uh, for predicates like where column like percentage value. We've got the filter expression. If the statistics are filtered, it shows that it's a filtered predicate. Otherwise, it's null. Unfiltered rows. If the statistics are filtered, it shows the number of rows in the table before applying that filter. All right, so let's look at the next section called the density vector. We only have three columns here. All density is the number between 0 and 1. The closer the density is to 0, the more unique the values are. That's why candidate keys have lower density numbers. All right, we see the average length. The average size in bytes of the columns or a set of columns that compose the statistics. Thirdly, we have columns. The name of a column is in the prefix for which all density and average lengths are displayed. Now let's take a look at the histogram. We have five columns there. The range high key is the upper bound column value for the histogram step. This column value is also called the key value. We've got the range rows, the estimated number of rows whose column values fall within the histogram step. The EQ rows, the estimated number of rows whose column values equals, hence the EQ, the upper bound of the histogram step. Then we've got the distinct range rows, the estimated number of rows with a distinct column value within the histogram step, excluding the upper bound. And then we have the average range rows. I don't want to say range rover, which is the average number of rows with duplicate column values within a histogram step, again, excluding the upper bound. OK, earlier in the lesson, I mentioned steps. Let's talk about those now. Histograms are created only for the first column of statistics objects. And they compress the information of the distribution of values in those columns by partitioning that information into the subjects called buckets or steps. The maximum number of steps in a histogram is 200. But even if the input has 200 or more unique values, a histogram may still have less steps than 200 steps. To build the histogram, SQL Server finds the unique values the most frequent ones using a variation of the max diff algorithm so that the most statistically significant information is preserved. The max diff is one of the available histograms whose purpose is to accurately represent the distribution of data values in relational databases.